are, are asked, sometimes almost forced, to put braces in their teeth, which is something that most children don't enjoy. The parents, in their wisdom, decide that that is the right way of doing it. The question then would be about the moral right. Do the parents have the right to do so? Is it because they are wiser and older, which is an assumption? Uh, it's not always, it is not necessarily true, but assuming that the parents are wise, wiser because they are older, which is surely not a formula that, that, that keeps the, that remains true in every consideration. But if so, from where stems the right to make decisions for others? And sometimes these decisions are not simple at all. They are decisions in which somebody makes a decision. Now, it goes beyond that point, even though, even though this point is important enough and, and, and common enough and, and should be pondered upon about the rights it, it, it comes, becomes uh, much, much, much more difficult when people become legal guardians of, their own, of the members of their own family. In, there are quite a number of cases in which, say, the children make decisions about their parents. And they make decisions which are connected with life and death, taking a treatment, not taking a treatment, endangering oneself, doing certain things for the quality of life versus prolonging life. Now, these questions are, they may have le legal answers in the sense that the, the, those uh, wise men who somehow always are elected to the legislature, legislature of, of every country. It's no other way of explaining their power, is that these wise people make decisions for others. It is still the, the, the moral, ethical, uh, say, question it still remains about what, what rights d does do certain people have over others? And again, to bring it one step farther, again, not, not entirely very far. It is not only that members of the family are allowed such rights, but clearly from philosophical, theological uh, considerations, society from time to time makes such decisions from small decisions of putting certain people in, in hospitals for, for, say, for life, because they are, society decided that they are crazy. And incidentally, in different parts, including, say, the, uh, the, the Soviet Union in its height, used it as a clearly as a oppressive measure that was done it was done willfully and surely not for for any for any moral consideration but for lit political considerations of doing something to others but again let's assume that the, that the consideration is completely is completely right does society as society have a right to do so? From where stands the right of society to do so? Again, another, another case that happened, in, in fact, in more than one country, including a, something that was kept as a, as a, almost as a secret, uh, but happened in Sweden for many years, where society, the legislation of that of that place decided that for the for the good of society, sometimes even for the good of the individual, 
they are sterilizing women that are below a certain mental or physical level. Now, that was a very clear decision. And it was, it was built on the notion that society, in whatever form, has the moral right to do so. It has the ability to make decisions about, about that which is, if, even if one doesn't want to be extreme, it goes on to the decision of, of society to get rid of certain undesirables because of the, of the same reasoning. And there were such societies that, that just took the same liberty about life. Now, all these questions are basically only facets of one, one question. To whom belongs this life? And the answer of it, the answer of it has almost immediately uh, different answers for any of these, of these particular cases. Now, it doesn't mean always that, that if I, if I think that, that the, the right of life and whatever stands for it, as I mentioned before, that the wholeness of life, or a certain kind of equality of life, should be also considered as a part of life. One may say that sterilizing a woman is not, is not causing any cosmetic damage and not, no, not any practical damage. It just uh, makes some kind of, of a small, small psychological problem, which with uh, good indoctrination can be passed over easily. The question is, how far reaching are such treatments? Such treatments, how do, do I consider them? small interference, big interference, is it something that I would say goes against the principle of, of the importance or sanctity of life itself? Or is it just, just something unimportant that, that, that goes into, the, in, into, that doesn't really belong into these considerations? Now, putting these questions in the, as, as a series of interrelated questions is again, one of the problems that are connected, addressed, or dealt with, with the with, from from the uh, the same the same basic uh, sources that we that we are dealing with in a, in a different form.